I saw a random internet headline the other day that caught my eye. People in open concept homes are realizing that walls are there for a reason. For those of you who don't know, open concept or open plan homes are homes where instead of having a bunch of separate rooms divided by walls, what the architect has tried to do is to try to make as many of the rooms as possible into one large room. So usually they'll combine the kitchen, the living room, the dining room into one big room without any walls. Open floor plans have been fashionable for a while now, and there's some good reasons for that. The advocates of open floor plans say that there's more space, that if you're entertaining guests, you can talk to them while you cook. It's easier to watch the kids. It's easier to have conversations because you're not all in separate rooms. The rooms can be multifunction. All these sound like great things. Let's get rid of these terrible restrictive walls, they said. It will be fun, they said. But now there's a backlash against the open floor concept. It turns out that those mean, nasty, restrictive, limiting walls actually do have some advantages. You get more privacy. It's more energy efficient. It's easier to keep them clean and clutter free. Now, I'm not saying that open floor plans are bad. That's not the point here. But what I am saying is that why is it that all these people made this decision without being aware of the potential downside? This is an example of what's called Chesterton's fence. This is named after the British author G.K. Chesterton. It's a principle that tells you when you should and should not get rid of a rule or an institution or really anything. And it goes like this. Imagine a fence. Now, the naive kind of reformer, Chesterton says, will come up to the fence and say, well, I don't see what this fence is for, let's get rid of it, and then he'll tear it down. Chesterton says the much smarter kind of reformer will instead look at that fence and say, hey, wait a second, before we get rid of that fence, let's figure out what it was for. Let's figure out what it was good for and what its use was, and then we'll know if we should actually tear it down or not. Now, Chesterton isn't saying that you can't get rid of fences, or rules, or institutions for that matter. You definitely can, but you have to do it intelligently. And to intelligently get rid of a fence, or any rule or institution, first you have to know why it was there in the first place. What is its use? What is it good for? Now maybe that use has expired, but you won't know that until you look for it. And if you really understand why that fence is there, you might end up making a different decision. Again, I'm not saying that open floor plans are bad. But I am saying that if people use Chesterton's fence as a decision-making tool, they would be much less likely to regret their decisions down the line. Obviously, the point here is much broader than just walls inside a house. It ranges out to all kinds of things, particularly rules and institutions, but really just about anything. Before you get rid of something, know why it was there. Know what it was good for. And then you'll be able to make an intelligent decision about whether it's really a smart idea to get rid of or not. Maybe it will be, maybe it won't, but it's worth looking into first. You may find that some things are more useful than they first appear. I thought of Chesterton's fence when I was looking at open concept floor plans, but I think it's a principle that pops up all over the place. So in the comment section, I'd be really curious to hear where you see this at work. Where are we potentially getting rid of rules or institutions or things without really understanding the underlying reasons for them first? If you enjoyed the video, we'd also love it if you'd share it with a friend, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and check back soon for more content. Uh, we'll see you soon. No, I don't know. Hang on, I haven't scripted this out. <laughs>